Good morning. It's Friday. You made it. And while it feels like it's the end of the week, which it certainly is, we are just getting started with one of the best sporting weeks of the entire year. Today, a bit of a pause. We do welcome back the Rockies to town as they start a series with Seattle. If the weather works out and we'll be doing Hangout Live from Coors Field. So we try to be on top of everything as much as possible and we'll see how things go there. That's later this afternoon. At 9 a.m., Chuckle at Payne with Nate and Chad where we're going to go over everything with the Payton's presser and see what hints they've made towards drafting a quarterback. We'll get to DMAX Mac where we get your feedback. So whatever you want to talk about in the comments, we'll get to in just a little bit. And the Avalanche know when they're playing in the playoffs. We've got it all for you right here at Kill You With Truth. And I'm so pumped and jacked that we have what, what, what promises to be an unbelievably exciting um, time. It's the best. The NFL draft doesn't have a conflict with the Avs. We'll get to that in a little bit as well. Everything is brought to you by Ed Prather Real Estate, the number one real estate team in the state of Colorado. He'll sell your home guaranteed. What an amazing team they have. They are the absolute best. They sold my home in a couple of days. We bought a home and made a significant adjustment where we thought we were going one way and win another, and they made it happen to our absolute delight. Nobody is better for you than Ed Prather Real Estate. Please check them out at edprather.com. Liking and subscribing to this channel really helps. We're just a few subscribers away from 6,000. It would be incredible if we could hit that mark. And when we started this a few months ago, to think that we would have 6,000 subscribers and over 2.2 million views, it's laughable. But we do so because we have great sponsors. We have Trek Bicycle Boulder. We had uh, Avid Caddy. We're going to have our great friends at Journey Spice Company, Ed Pray the Real Estate. This is a collective team effort, no doubt. And nothing is possible without my partnership and my employer at Altitude Sports Radio, where you can hear me from noon to three with Tyler Columbus and Scott Hastings. Man. I got nothing to complain about, that's for sure. And listen, let's go. About last night, we start with the Broncos and the Paytons. The relationship between these two guys is fascinating. And good for Mike Kliss for asking the question that was the most obvious, and he was direct with it yesterday. You know, doesn't it have to be, given this standard around here with more Super Bowls and losing seasons for a long time, Elway, Manning, don't you have to get a quarterback? Look, I mean, do we have to draft a quarterback? You'd say, man, it sure looks like we have to draft a quarterback. And yet, um, it's it's got to be the right fit, the right one. And if we had the tip sheets as to who everyone else was taking, it'd be easier to answer that question. Um, and so that's the, that's the puzzle here. You you know? What you don't want to do, Mike, is force it. And, uh, you know, otherwise we'll be in this position next year and the years after. So you, you want to get the right player at 12. Our first pick we got to hit on, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's a tackle, receiver, you name it. Uh, we need to get an impact player. For, for either. You're seeing everything you need to see right there, folks. You're seeing everything you need to see. Of course, it's got to be a quarterback. And of course, it's going to be a quarterback or I'd be absolutely stunned. And most likely, they're thinking about how to make an aggressive move up for, well, what would have to be J.J. McCarthy. So it's an indicator to me that they really do love J.J. McCarthy, but they may be okay with Bo Nix or Michael Penix. Uh, unless something other quirky happens. I mean, you just never know. But to see Sean Payton's response, and then George Payton kind of jump right in there, sort of to save the day, you can tell what the dynamic here. It is Sean Payton in charge 
of what he wants. But George Payton is still, he like has the keys to the car. It's as if uh, Sean Payton is the high school star quarterback that gets all the attention. And George Payton is the dad that nobody knows, but he still has the keys to the car on a Friday night. There's a check and balance system. You know, Sean Payton is not George Payton's boss, but Sean Payton is going to get what he wants in certain departments. He couldn't work with Russell Wilson. 53-32 split. See you later. In terms of the quarterback, if Sean Payton wants it, they're going to go try to get it. What's the point in having Sean Payton if you don't go with that? Now, other positions, other places on the team, that's all George Payton. It's not that he won't do it in collaboration with Sean, but it's clear in this process that Sean Payton's going for a quarterback, and that pumps me up. I also love the fact that Sean Payton was talking about relative value. I've been talking about this for literally years, that not all players are created equal. And Sean Payton explains Belichick was on this podcast the other day, which was kind of interesting because you get a chance to to hear him in a different light. And, and I've gotten to know him over the years. And he said something that was interesting. Just He's like, look, every one of these teams' boards are different, like, dramatically and then obviously when you move away from one the margin of difference expands you know in other words as you get closer to one they're still different and so um but do we factor in the position they play relative to yeah i mean we we're in these group studies in the fifth round and in the middle of the fifth round, let's say six players and one of them's an edge player and the other's, uh, I don't know, tight end or guard. Um, I don't know that there's any such thing as they're equal, but the, the edge player has more value. I absolutely love what I'm hearing out of Sean Payne. He also talked about AI, not Allen Iverson. Artificial intelligence is perhaps the way of the future, which It's funny because I've always thought, listen, if you just went with auto draft, which is AI, you'd probably do okay. Sometimes you don't need to overthink the draft. And sometimes your own scouting can get in your way of more cold, hard analytical data about what you need. You can put whatever parameters you want into the machine, and that's going to help spit out where you should go. I love Sean Payne's approach. I do. And I think it's good that George Payne offers some sense of balance. I just don't want George Payne in charge of the most important decisions because he hasn't proved that he could find a quarterback. So I don't really trust George Payne in that department. But there's other areas where I think George Payne is just fine. I think there's back end of the draft sort of selections and the attention to detail that I think is cool and is good to have. But I'm glad that Sean Payne is out in front of it all. And I'm certainly glad they have stability and ownership with Greg Penner. And I think this is a good foundation for what is about to happen. So I like it. And even though you might take a couple steps back record-wise this year, because the 53-32 split is harsh, that's for sure. It's such a great opportunity to build depth and then take the quarterback to build around and give it your best shot. And if that quarterback doesn't work out, rinse and repeat. But you'll have a better foundation in which to build around the next guy if this guy doesn't work. And what's best is you won't have to sacrifice a bunch of draft picks and capital in the future like you did for Russell Wilson because your quarterback plan did not work out when you drafted Patrick Sertan. Had it worked out, had you got Aaron Rodgers, Had Hackett been fine, the draft pick of Sertan would have been all right. But even that would have had a relative uh, limited shelf life because when you get one of these older quarterbacks, what are you signing up for? Four, five years max? I mean, that's when they become available. They become available. That's why Deshaun Watson was so unusual. But usually they become available later in their career because if you're any good, you're going to sign a contract with the team you started with. Cases like Baker Mayfield or Peyton Manning, it's unusual. And again, how long are they your quarterback for? 
You don't get 10 to 15 years out of free agent quarterbacks. No, the best you get is three to five. And maybe that's good enough, but that is one stressful way to keep going over and over and over again. The way that you could possibly get that 10 to 15 year career of success as the Chiefs have, as the Bills have, as the Ravens have, I think as the Jaguars will have, as the Chargers will have, the way to go is to draft that quarterback as high as possible. Now, I'm not against drafting a quarterback later, too. Niners moved up for Trey Lance. Didn't work out, but they did draft Brock Purdy. I mean, they did sort of take a chance later on. That's fine as well. However it works is okay, but you either have a quarterback that is being paid $50 million or is going to be paid $50 million. And if you don't have one of those dudes, brother, you better move on. About last night, let's go to Nuggets practice as they get ready for the Lakers. And Michael Malone speaks about the difference in the playoff. Uh, physicality. Uh, the game slows down. Uh, you know, the Lakers are a great running team. We're a pretty good running team. But the game slows down. It becomes more of a half-court basketball game. Those easy baskets are much harder to come by in general. Um, and then the physicality. I, I think... Um, they, they let us play a little bit more. Each possession is a, a lot more critical and crucial to your success. But I would say big for me is just the overall, I think the physicality is, uh, is what stands out to me, the biggest difference, 82 regular season and to postseason. My guy, Vic Lombardi, at Nuggets Practice. Way to go, Vic. Awesome stuff. Follow Vic for everything when it comes to uh, the Nuggets and basketball and in uh, adoration of John Elway. That's my guy, Vic. Yeah, it gets more physical. It gets tough, but the Nuggets are suited for it. And Jamal Murray is not backing Let's down. The secret sauce. How, how do you elevate your game in the playoffs? I just feel like the playoffs is the time you want to see the best players perform. And um, I try to do that every single time. Um, you know, it's the competition is great. The, the adrenaline is higher. The minutes are higher, the shots are more, uh, the confidence is all the way up there. So, um, you know, when uh, when they take off the leash like that, it's fun to just go out there and, uh, and play my game. When you found out you were playing the Lakers and the challenge they posed, do you welcome that? Is that something like, oh yeah, let's go? Of course, I think they're welcoming it more. I think uh, they're going to play this year a lot um, better than they did last year. Um, they have something they have more, more motivation um they're a tough team they got arguably the greatest player to ever play um anthony davis is, is is tough every single night so i think you know it's not a you know, every game we played last year was still a, a good tough game that we had to grit out but uh we came up on top so um i think this year they're gonna try to just like i said learn from their mistakes and, 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 and bring a little bit more edge to the, to the table. Um. All right. Well, that's Jamal Murray. The Nuggets aren't backing down, and they start on Saturday night in Denver, and the atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. I am pumped to be there to cover it all for you while here in Denver. Saturday and Monday, let's go Nuggets. It's going to be a thrill. They've got another practice today, and then – here we go. It's been a nice rest. And we learned last year that having this rest, having a couple of hard practices, really benefited the Nuggets. They did not get rusty and improve them. And with the same starting five, that's solid. The minutes go up. The physicality goes up. But the timeouts get longer. The rest gets bigger. And, yeah, they give the Lakers a break because there's a two-day rest between games two and games three saturday monday in denver tuesday wednesday off thursday and saturday in la it's gonna be awesome no doubt about it listen i get it it's a little frustrating had you beat san antonio you'd be getting ready to play well we'll find out the playoffs aren't completely set yet and we'll see who wins as we have a couple of games in the play-in tournament still to go. Chicago at Miami and Sacramento at New Orleans. And the Pelicans do not have Zion, so I assume Sacramento will win that. But whatever. 
You can't face fix that now anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so who cares? You're playing the Lakers. Embrace it. They will. And it's going to be awesome. And the Nuggets have played great against the Lakers. So will it be a sweep? I doubt it. I really do doubt it. And when the, if the Nuggets lose a game, I can see people freaking out. I mean, I get it. But I think at the end, beating the Nuggets four out of seven games for a team that hasn't beat them in forever in the playoffs, despite being the in-season tournament winner, I think is a challenge the Nuggets will be up for. Can't wait. About last night, when it comes to your Colorado Avalanche, well, the season is over, and there's good news to report. So let's just get to that, because we were barreling down a per potential nightmare path. They win 5-1 to one over an Oilers team that wasn't playing anybody. And boy, did the Avalanche prove that, scoring four goals on their first six shots in the first 11 minutes of the game. It was insane. Nate McKinnon got two quick assists and with 140 points, passes Stasny for the leader in points for an entire season. Never mind just the avalanche. He, he eclipses the Nordiques record as well. Nathan McKinnon just had the highest scoring point season in organizational history. And that is fantastic. Nate, are you happy about the record? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, definitely a legend. Uh, Peter Stassi, one of the best ever to play. Um, you know, he had some crazy seasons. Uh, you know, I think he had a lot better seasons than me overall. Just one, but obviously, I think it's a team accomplishment. A lot of guys helped me out along the way. Uh, tons of great hockey this season. Uh, but, you know, my focus is definitely on the playoffs. I'm not really thinking about this at all, to be honest. How nice was he to get a good night? It looks like a guy who stepped on a fork. You, you set an unbelievable record. You won 5-1. to one. Why is your dauber down? Nate, Nate, how would you describe the season and where you guys are at now going into the season? Um, yeah, it's been up and down for sure. I think we've had a lot of great moments. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're very humble right now. We're definitely coming into the playoffs, which I think is a good thing. Uh, you know, I think we, we've, been, we've had a great, great week of practice, trying to work on things defensively, uh, sort of some issues, and definitely have another couple days to get ready to go here. How are you going to? You know, it's apprehensive. The fact that it's been such a roller coaster is apparent to everybody. Listen, there were some incredible things, but there were also some crazy things. And last night, Jonathan Drouin went out, and after the game, Jared Bednar said he had no idea what his status would be. Okay, the, the Oilers didn't play anybody. Uh, I had the same viewpoint. I could have thrown a piece of popcorn and hit Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. They were up in the press box with well, me and all the other hockey muggles. It was nice to have you up there, boys. You look great. You're wearing suits and a hat. It wasn't that cold, but that is the hockey look, the suit and the toque. That being said, nothing about last night warranted any sort of celebration. The Avalanche finish at 50, 25, and 7, 107 points, good for third place in the Central as the Stars roll with 113 points and the Jets with 110. And it's Winnipeg they'll face. Kale McCarr knows it's do or die time. It's been a lot of ups and downs this season, and I think um, going into playoffs, the mindset just completely shifts. It's do or die. And I think that's obviously every, you want to win every single game you can in the regular season. But at the same time, playoffs is a completely different animal. And we're going to have a few guys. we got Mitzi, who's, who's been in playoffs for the first time. Um, and then other guys like Trent, who's a gamer, Colts, who's a gamer. So, um, for us, it's gonna, guys are going to need to step up. It's not Like I just said, it's not going to be one guy. And I think that mindset um, has got to shift. And um, everybody's got to be, be on their toes and working hard. Jared Bednar said that their experience will help, especially when times get a little tough or things get down. I mean, you have a lot, not a few, a lot of Stanley Cup champions in that room. A lot Stanley Cup champions with the Avalanche, a couple Stanley Cup champions on other teams. <clears throat> so it's not like they haven't been there before. It's not like they don't have the experience. 
So we'll see. But still, they just don't know what to expect out of themselves. I mean, depth-wise, I feel like we're in a better spot as a team, and, and we should feel that. And uh, with depth comes confidence. I think it's just, like I said, getting guys to play the right roles, and um, that's what we've kind of been building over the last month here. So, um, yes, for us, it's just it's going to be game by game, shift by shift, and we can't look too far ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay, so here we go. Now we know the playoffs. So while the Nuggets start on Saturday, the Avalanche start on Sunday at 5 p.m. Cool start time. I love it. 5 p.m. local out there in Winnipeg. That's Sunday. Then they play Tuesday, 7.30 our time. And what I was so nervous about is would we have the Avs, Nuggets, and NFL draft at the same exact time? The answer to that is no. Smartly, thank God, the NHL has enough brains to schedule the avalanche on Friday, not Thursday, back here in Colorado. And I am incredibly grateful for that. And that is the only two-day stretch. So it does look like they did that on purpose because of the draft and the nuggets. So cool. It's the only time in this series that there's two days between playoff games. I love it. So Friday at 8 p.m. and then Sunday at 1230. From there, they'd play Tuesday, April 30th in Winnipeg. Thursday, May 2nd back in Colorado. And Saturday, if need be, in Game 7. Saturday, May 4th at Winnipeg as well. So balance-wise, it works out. You don't have conflicts with the Nuggets and the Avs. It is crazy back-to-back -back action. The only night of the week next week that does not have a playoff game, never mind the NFL draft, which is on Thursday, is Wednesday. And I do believe everybody scheduled that so I could watch the TV show Survivor and The Amazing Race with my wife. Thank you, NBA and NHL. About last night, when it comes to D Max Mac, brought to you by Ed Prey, the real estate, the number one real estate team in Colorado, number one trusted, the absolute best. Ed Prey there and his team, that's where I went to for the most important moments of my life in terms of selling a home and buying a home. It's critically important for my family that we did the right thing. I've been talking with Ed for literally years about my plan. And for months, we had used incredible strategy that was executed flawlessly. I can't thank Ed and his team enough. And if you like what we do here, edprather.com. Reach out and say thank you. We are so appreciative. Let's see what you've got to say. Let's scroll through the comments. And get to it. Wesley, good morning. A little nervous about the Broncos. Unis, according to Nick Ferguson and Ben Albright, they are not so great. <laughs> I'm sure the uniforms will be just fine, despite uh, Nick and Ben being worried about the uniforms. I'm sure they'll be okay. Uh, good morning, DMAC. Have a great weekend. Go, Lakers. Michael, what would we do without your pessimism? Ed Prather, man of the year. Ain't no doubt about it. Brent checking in. Good morning, Brent. Good morning, T-Mac. Steven, where does guy that takes a Zoom call with no headphones in the library rank on your list? Higher or lower than guy that talks about his fantasy football team? Uh, I was in um, my gym sauna, and, and somebody was watching a video with no headphones on. In a public space with no headphones on, you are a jerk. The end. Roxanne, good morning to you. Good morning, T-Mac. Here we go with Chris. Chris asked the best questions and the worst one. Seriously, Mike, no one cares about a celebrity hockey game or drafting a QB. When you get deeper into press conferences, you know, odd things sometimes turn out. But Mike is exceptional. He's a very good friend, and I love what Mike... Cliss does. Maybe there was something to the celebrity hockey game I wasn't aware of. Brent, I think they love one QB. I don't I, I think they could love multiple. 
If they aren't picking in the first five picks for a QB, they won't pick one at 12. Well, there's a hot take. It would be a position player, a backup in rounds four and five and riding with Stiddy in 2024. You know what's exciting? We have less than a week to find out. Could be Drake May that they like. I think they take either. LOL. Thank you, Sam. They like somebody. Ain't no doubt about it. Feels like Sean wants JJ. That'd be JJ McCarthy out of Michigan. Fine by me. Kevin, Wesley must be one of the only people not blocked on Twitter by the weirdo Ben Albright. Don't know. Don't follow Ben. Don't really pay attention. Uh, Big E Bronco. Jaden Daniels going to be a bust. RG3 2.0 Pax and Lynch. There's your hot take. Um, one read quarterback and runs. Watching Jaden Daniels for years, starting at Arizona State, it surprised me where he's come to. Don't know. Really don't know. Blossomed at LSU and won the Heisman. Right size, right athletic ability, right smarts, right everything as far as I can tell. We'll see. Doug Tessier, can't wait to see Knicks in the new uniforms. New uniforms do come out Monday. And according to our uh, viewers here, uh, Nick and Ben say they stink. I guess I'm sure they'll be great. Uh, Chris Heisel. I would much prefer Bo at 12 than trading the farm for JJ. Either way though, I'll be so excited and anxiously awaiting camp. Chris completely agree with you. It feels absurd that they don't roll the dice on one of what is proving to be one of the more talented, deeper quarterback classes. It's a deep, talented quarterback class. Everybody agrees about that. It's unique to not go for somebody this year. You could run into a Kenny Pickett year next year. There's no guarantee what's next. You don't know when you're going to suck. You don't know what position you'll be in. And you don't know where everybody else will be. It's risky. It's best to not get in this position in the first place. But here you are. We go to Brent. If you also give up the next two years, number one pick for a quarterback, you're betting you're, you'll be good enough to make those number ones feel like number twos you don't have. Well, most likely you wouldn't be giving up two number ones. Maybe you'd give up next year's perhaps, but really the big move aside from a number one next year would be Pat Sertan. And really, when you look at it, you should have traded them at the trade deadline to get yourself number ones to be in this position, but they beat the chiefs and it screwed everything up right before the trade deadline. I don't believe Cecil at all on Drake may. Drake is more Stafford than Mac Jones. I don't trust Cecil's sources either. Andy Reid. Reid would be honest with Cecil, a huge Bronco fan writer. I don't even know what Cecil's saying. Is he saying it's about to be Drake May? I have not heard that, but I don't know. Both Sean Payton and Bill Belichick listed corner as one of the high value positions in recent interviews. So I think your valuation of corners is way off. It's the fifth most important position on the field. Quarterback, left tackle, pass rusher, wide receiver cornerback is what it is. I don't think they're going quarterback unless he really likes Knicks. They're not going any quarterback unless they really like him. We go to Doug. I think Sean has loved Knicks since day one. They've talked to everybody. Ain't no doubt. But they've told you they've talked to eight quarterbacks. They're going quarterback at some point. Cecil Source, LOL. That's me. We go to Sam. Cecil's main source is Andy Reid. Yeah, that, that would be pretty remarkable if his source was Andy Reid. Have to at least get a quarterback in rounds four or five later as a backup. Don't want to roll with Danucci again. Oh, you don't like Danucci? He was on the practice squad. I hope the fan base will be patient with the quarterback if they draft one. I remember when the fans booed PFM at a game. Well, yeah, I mean, they were down like 20 nothing at halftime. He had a quarterback rating of zero. He did set the passing record on a little dump off to C.J. Anderson in that game, but wasn't a good game. He was hurt. Um, Gary Kubiak said he shouldn't have even played Peyton in that game, and Gary was right about that. Good morning, Andon, my guy, Journey Spice Company. Let's get it together. Let's get it together, Andon. Abs didn't expect Annan to start. Looks like we're going to have a goalie controversy on our hands. Not a good look going into the playoffs. I don't think there's a controversy. I think your give Annan is going to start. I don't really think there's even much debate about that. And it looked decent. He actually made one spectacular save. Um, but it's going to be Georgiev. It is. Now, 
How long of a leash will it be? We'll see. Does that mean Georgiev is going to start every game ahead of Ananen? No. But Georgiev will start game one. I've got no doubts about it. I'd be stunned if it's something else. When do the Lakers have their ring ceremony for winning the in-season tournament? I think they've already had their banner-raising ceremony for that. Do they get a ring for that or just a commemorative button? Maybe a juice box. You guys are a riot. I hate the in-season tournament and the play-in tournament. Stop monkeying around with the season. Just start round one. Get off my lawn, JG. That's exactly what you sound like. The in-season tournament is like in November and December. It just jazzes things up during kind of a boring part of the season. It's just kind of fun. Cecil's main and only source is Google search. Wow, we're taking shots today, huh? How would Benny even know? I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Good morning, DMAC. Nuggets and four. John, I love the prediction. If you disagree with Benny, blocks you like a child. Listen, enough with these guys. Who cares? Hi, DMAC. This is from Ryan. FYI, I'm on your side of the Elway debate. I think you're in the right frame that Prime should be the AD. Both Elway and Prime are good for their organizations. They're not good at the minutiae of their jobs. What can I tell you? As ambassadors for the Broncos and for the university, both Deion Sanders and John Elway are second to none. But as management or a coach in Prime's case, it doesn't appear that they've really got it all together. I'll be thrilled to be proven wrong about Prime, but the hay's in the barn with Elway. Sam, I have heard the unis have an actual mountain range either on the sleeves or shoulders should be unique. Cool. Sounds good. Don't be a get off my long guy when it comes to uniforms. Be open. Agree 100% with your take on John Elway. Great player. Horrible GM. Very solid president of football and, re and recruiter of free agents. Had he just stuck to that, he'd have been fine. But it's the GM part that, you know, he got hung up on. And in Broncos wire leaked the Broncos uniforms looked like they were signed by a 10-year-old on TikTok. All right, Handon. Have a great weekend, DMAC. Hey, Christopher, how could I not? We've got a full day today at 9 a.m. Chuckle at Payne with Nate and Chad. And Ed Prather Real Estate brings you all of this. Thank you, Ed Prather, the number one trusted real estate team in Colorado. Check them out at edprather.com. The absolute best. Man, when the Fed lowers the rates, time may be right to act. Make sure you have your team lined up with Ed Prather at edprather.com. Michael's laughing and crying and smiling. And we got John celebrating my birthday weekend. Please play the PhD show rap. DMAC draft is quarterback. Thank you, John, and happy birthday to you. Sorry, DMAC. Didn't know Albright would sh stir up so much in the chat. Spicy. Doesn't matter to me. Fine by me. I just don't care. DMAC doesn't like uniforms. I live for uniforms. Everybody needs a uniform. You got to look like something. Do I care what they look like? Not really, but I know a lot of people care. I do. I mean, I totally get the passion for uniforms out there, but look how I dress. I kill you with truth. I kill myself with truth, but I'll be wearing a suit later today. Why? Ah, we're dropping off gear, playoff gear to a bunch of listeners from Altitude Sports Radio 92.5. I'm getting dressed up because I've dropped 40 pounds because of soda weight loss. And I'm going to wear a suit that I haven't worn since the late 80s because I own a suit, not like frumpy Vic Fangio. Do I dress up a lot? No. But could I? Yes. I ain't Vic Fangio. I'm DMAC. I kill you with truth.